inquiring minds want to know, we want to talk a little bit about pH. We're going to, if we can, we're going to try to interrupt Chase while he's in the middle of, of bottling. So just please ignore the, the, the movement and the activity because it's a flurry of activity that's going to take place for the rest of the day. Chase, can, what can you tell us about pH and why is this so important? Uh, well, it's, it's a good time to ask about pH. We're going into the bottle. And when you're going into the bottle with a wine like this or mead, uh, longe longevity is important. Absolutely, you want it to yeah. age gracefully and last for a very, very long time. And one of the biggest factors is the pH. Uh, generally speaking, you want, a, you want a low pH. You want your drink to be acidic. Uh, more specifically, a target pH is like 3 to 3.5. Anything higher than that probably won't last as long as it could have. Okay, so we're talking about a 3 to 3.5. Now remember, in distilling, our mash, we're looking for a 5.2. And that's a bit on the acidic side. And just as a refresher, you know, you're... Your pH level goes from 0 to 14, 7 being neutral, uh, being, that's balanced. Um, and then what they call anything lower than 7 is acidic, and anything higher than 7, they call that a base, or we say alkaline. So, uh, and how, so how, do you, how do you do your testing? Uh, well, we've got a nice fancy uh, Hannah pH meter yeah. from Hannah Instruments. Okay. I would recommend any home brewer looking to up their pH game, not necessarily up their pH, but... Uh, <laughs> I would recommend looking at Hanna Instruments. Uh, I've got a really nice, fancy, calibratable, uh, it's about an $800 unit, but I've also got a nice $30 tester that's wonderful for like a quick read in the vineyard, especially for like a homebrew scale operation. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, much better than going to the pool supply store and buying a pH strip and trying to match colors. You, right. you don't, uh, yeah, don't want to be doing that. <laughs> right, you don't want to be doing But I mean, in a pinch, you know, you're out in the middle of it. You know Absolutely. I mean? That's all you got. You run to Walmart and get those pH strips. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, what is it about adjusting pH? Sure. Uh, usually, or at least so far, uh, in my entire home and professional mead making career, I've never found myself wanting to raise my pH, but I have found myself wanting to lower it. Okay. Um, and that's just done by adding acid. Okay. Uh, my favorite acid to use is tartaric. Uh, although, this is a citrus tango mead, if I wanted to lower the pH on this, I would use citric acid because that's going to match the citrus fruit. It's going to meld yeah. with the flavor. It's going to work So would well. you recommend maybe a lemon? I mean, for, for this operation, oh, yeah. you... Oh, yeah. okay. Well, if you're worrying about a mash at home and just need to quickly get some acid, lower the pH, Squeeze that lemon right into there. That's, okay. you, you can't go wrong cool. with that. Now, tartaric acid is one of the acids. Remember, the, you know the acid blend you have is tartaric, malic, and citric, right? Yes. Yeah, and tartaric is one of those. So that's, uh, that's Chase's go-to acid that he uses all the time. It is. It's the most common acid in wine grapes. Uh -huh. And so it's going to be the most familiar kind of tartness to a wine drinker. Okay. Uh, so I've done that with, like, traditional meads that taste real kind of... They don't have, like, a tang. They just kind of, like, have this fall-flat finish. Right. You can add some tartaric, and it'll feel a little bit more like the aftertaste of a wine. Uh, someone comfortable with that is going to be a lot more likely to feel that it's familiar and la latch on and feel like they know that they're tasting it right. Oh, okay. Yeah. There you have it. Everything you want to know about pH. Chase? I, I don't recommend acid blends. Yeah. You mentioned that. Uh, yeah. I, I started out using a, just a store-bought acid blend, and it was those three. Yeah. Um, I've had much more fun and much more success just buying the acids individually and trying them out. Acid trials are one of my favorite things to do. Oh, wow. Uh, we can make a, a hands-on video about acid trials later We'd on. We'd love to sure. do that, and we're going to do that here in the near future. Like, uh, real quickly, what, uh, what about the malic? And we've already talked about citric. What about, what's so specific about uh, that acid? About citric acid? No, not citric, malic. Malik, I know to be the main acid in like Granny Smith apples. Okay. It's very tart. It's like one of the most sour tart acids. Okay. Um, if you're making a grape wine or maybe like a sizer, which is an apple mead, is something I would run into. Um, if the acid profile is just way too tart, you can go through something called malolactic fermentation. It's a bacterial fermentation, not a yeast fermentation. It's going to turn the malic acid into lactic acid, which is smoother tasting. Just kind of like turn the volume down on the tartness a little bit. Okay. Is that what you were? Oh yeah, that's exactly for? what okay. I was doing. Because <laughs> at some point we're going to talk about this malolactic fermentation mm -hmm. uh, because it's a totally separate topic all to itself. So hey, Chase, thanks again for all your help, man. We Absolutely. appreciate it. Yep. Hey, until next time. Uh, happy, happy brewing. brewing.